What up nerds? You may notice that you're looking at my cat instead of me right now. Do whatever you gotta do, you don't have to look at my cat. Feel free to treat this like a podcast, wander around, clean your, clean your house, whatever you need to do. But I am here with a shallow dive. I saw something on Instagram and from that thing on Instagram, I opened two additional articles. I read them, I'm gonna use one for reference right now. And we're just gonna talk about this. Credit where credit is due. I first saw this on a post from your fat friend on Instagram. Please follow her if you have any interest in knowing about not just body positivity, but anti-fat phobia in general, because, and I do wanna make this clear, body positivity and like the fight against fat phobia are linked, but they are not the same thing. Body positivity is just like, yes, I accept my body. I look good no matter what, that's great but by itself, it doesn't actually do that much to help fat people. It does what I'm honestly gonna call the bare minimum, which is say, hey, I'm gonna allow you to exist in this world. Honestly, a bare minimum that's somehow still below the bare minimum, because one of the biggest issues that fat people face, continue to face, that I have faced, and I'm not even that fat, and I'll get into that later, is medical fat phobia. The fact that we literally train doctors and nurses and other medical professionals to look down on fat people, to not take their medical issues seriously on the basis of their weight is unacceptable. I'm not gonna say it's surprising because it isn't, because I've exp- I have experienced medical fat phobia at the age of literally 11. So, and there are people who have experienced it younger than that. And it's not even just the intrinsic bias based on society's beauty standards. Like some of it is taught, like actively taught in medical courses. I have worked as an editor behind the scenes on medical courses that are being delivered to students. And I have had to actively go in and change things because I'm reading them going, this is literally fat phobic. And another thing which Aubrey talks about in her post, which I will link in the description. And also again, just follow her in general. She posts a lot of really good, really educational content. A lot of things that I didn't know before I started following her. Um, I would also suggest that you follow Hannah Talks Bodies while we're on this topic. Similarly, learned a lot from her account. I will link her in the description as well. One of the things that I sort of knew existed, but really learned a lot more from those two accounts, I think from Audrey's in particular, that's the Your Fat Friend account, is that there are common instances where medical treatment won't be provided to a fat person unless or until they lose weight. And in particular, this happens with surgeries. Now there may or may not be a valid medical reason behind this for some surgeries. Honestly, I'm not educated enough to really speak on that but a lot of it is definitely, definitely just rooted in pure fat phobia. And so there are occasions where prior to giving someone like a life-saving medical treatment, they will either force them to undergo like strict dieting or they will give them weight loss surgery. And no shade to people who have gotten weight loss surgeries, oftentimes they are dangerous or harmful or, you know, people just do them because they're buying into the social stigma or because in some cases they're essentially forced to by their doctors. Basically as a replacement for those types of incredibly dangerous, potentially life-threatening weight loss surgeries is this. And I'm gonna put a device on the screen, but I'm also gonna give a content warning. If you, like me, are a person who is sometimes just very sensitive to these types of discussions, you either may want to dip out for the rest of this video or just read Aubrey's summary because she does a great job of talking about this without showing the images, without going into too much of like the gruesome details of what this is. But I really personally wanted to get into it and talk about it more. So like I said, content warning, if this sounds like it's not for you, put your own personal health and safety first, but do, if you can, go and read Aubrey's post, which again, I will link in the description. If you're still here, I'm gonna start by showing you the image of what this is. So it looks like this. And I want you to take a second and think, how is this a weight loss plan? How is this a weight loss surgery? How will this help people lose weight? And if you looked at it and first thought, wow, that looks weirdly like a torture device. Um, First of all, you are correct. And then if the next thing you thought was, Well, it can't possibly be just holding their mouths shut so they can't eat because that's barbaric. Um, Yeah, you're right on the second part of that. It's absolutely barbaric. But yes, it magnetically locks someone's jaw closed so they physically can't open their mouths to eat. It leaves them with two millimeters. That's, That's all they can open their mouths, two millimeters wide. I literally stared at myself in the mirror earlier with my teeth 
about what I would consider two millimeters apart and I couldn't talk. I could get like muttered words out. Like maybe if you're a ventriloquist, this is the weight loss surgery for you. But for literally anyone else, it's not just closing fat people's mouths so that they can't eat. It's effectively muzzling them. I'm gonna read you some of the highlights from an article that I found. I'll link this in the description as well. You know me, I'm a big site in your sources person, but I'm just gonna read some of this to you. And then after we've done that as a background, I will go through Aubrey's post. Hopefully she won't be mad at me about that. But considering I have like a hundred followers, I don't think I'll be taking away from whatever her revenue stream is. So the title of this article is a disturbing new, and it's in quotes, thank you Yahoo, you know what's up. A disturbing new weight loss device seeks to lock people's jaws shut. Researchers in the UK and at the University of Otago in New Zealand say they are fighting the quote unquote obesity epidemic with a new disturbing device that locks people's jaws shut, forcing them to consume only a liquid diet. So again, back to what I was saying, they can't open their mouths, but they can like just barely stick a straw in there. The Dental Slim Diet Control Device, as they call it, I hate that, I hate that so much, uses magnetic locking bolts on the upper and lower back teeth that restrict the person wearing it from opening their jaw more than two millimeters. The device is fitted by a dental professional and comes with a key to unlock it in case of emergency. So two things there. One, I don't know what kind of dental professional thinks that it would be ethical of them to just lock somebody's jaw shut. I would think a dental professional would be like, you should never have your jaw locked shut because being able to use your mouth is important. If you can only have a liquid diet, you don't need teeth, so we don't need dentists. Like, what dental professional is agreeing to this? University of Otago Health Sciences Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Brunton, remember that name, we've decided we hate him, Professor Paul Brunton, the lead researcher of the clinical study described the diet control device as an effective, safe, and affordable tool for people battling obesity. Effective, safe, and affordable. I guarantee it is none of those three things. Maybe in countries with socialized medicine, it'll be affordable. But aside from that, in the US, it's definitely none of those three. And in general, I'm gonna say, just based on literally looking at it, that it's not gonna be effective or safe. Based on looking at it and knowing what I know about diet culture and how weight loss surgeries and diets in general tend to end, which is that people, as soon as they get off of them, gain the weight back. Brunton further claimed the main barrier for people for successful weight loss is compliance. Just that one sentence, I could probably spend 10 minutes talking about. The idea that the main barrier for successful weight loss is compliance. What are they saying there? That that fat people don't want to lose weight badly enough to stop eating. So the only solution is to lock their jaws shut. Fully, that is one of the most dystopian things I have ever read. That the barrier for people to successful weight loss is compliance. That you're just not willing to stop eating. That is not the issue. People's metabolisms work differently. People are built differently. People's biologies are different. People have different mental health struggles. And this treatment, and I'm using air quotes even though you can't see me, this treatment addresses none of those issues. Next up, and this is a quote, the fact that the weight loss device looks very much like a torture device further contributes to the radical dehumanization of fat people within the healthcare system. Stephanie Yeboa, a body confidence advocate and author of Fatally Ever After, told Refinery29, not only can we assume that the device may be painful to put on, think like braces, those are already painful, and that's a tiny bit of metal in your mouth, Look at how much this is. But all this does is further the narrative of fat people being incredibly greedy, undisciplined, and food obsessed, with clamping our jaws shut, effectively muzzling us, being the only solution to stop us from eating. Seven women, described as, quote, healthy, obese participants, participated in the study by wearing the device for two weeks. So I want to address something right now. This study was conducted on, quote, their words, healthy, obese participants. If you have a healthy, obese person, why do they need to lose weight? Clearly their weight is not impacting or damaging their health in any way. So why do they need to lose weight? Is it just so that you'll think they look better? So that the world has less ugly fatties for you to have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? Because if that's the case, close your eyes. Don't go outside. Because if it says they're healthy, obese participants, then they don't need any kind of weight loss treatment. Also, how did any of this any part of this study get past an IRB. What institutional review board looked at this study and said, yeah, that seems healthy. That seems like it's not going to endanger your participants. 
Obviously it is. These people are going to have lasting psychological damage from this, let alone whatever it did to their jaws and or metabolisms. Speaking of, they lost more than 14 pounds on average in that time, but gained back about 1.6 pounds in the two weeks that followed. Depending on how obese these people were and how much water weight they lost, I'm just gonna say losing 14 pounds in two weeks is incredibly unhealthy. And then back to the psychological damage I said was no doubt going to be a part of this. The participants reported feeling embarrassed, self-conscious, and that life in general was less satisfying throughout the duration of the study. They felt that way for two weeks. These healthy, obese people were brought in and made to feel shame for two weeks straight. And the people who conducted this study, who I guarantee gathered that information from them and included it somewhere, maybe just as a footnote in their study, were comfortable giving these healthy, fat people a device that made them feel shamed, self-conscious, that they had less satisfying lives for two weeks. And if that doesn't tell you how the medical community views fat people enough, then I don't know what else to say. Actually, here's what to say, back to the article. This is literally saying that people would rather live a less satisfying life in a smaller body than have a full and satisfying life in a larger or fat body. Chelsea Cronengold, Associate Director of Communications for the National Eating Disorders Association, told the Washington Post. And that is weight stigma in a summary. Fat people, on their own, regularly put their health at risk in an attempt to fit into society's beauty standards. And by beauty standards, I mean society's need for everyone to be thin and therefore acceptable. We do it to ourselves. We don't need a dentist coming in and gluing our mouths shut, because that's effectively what this treatment is. Except it's worse because it's something visible. So you can go around and people might say, oh, did you get braces? And you would have to say, no, this is to keep me from eating. Except you wouldn't be able to say that because you would barely be able to talk because you would have a muzzle on. Yeboa further described the device as degrading and humiliating and said it does not solve the main issues surrounding eating disorders slash food obsession, which is tackling it from a mental health standpoint. This device will do nothing but engulf fat people in a circle of shame and unworthiness, which in turn can lead to further mental health issues where overeating may become a side effect. Can confirm. I am not at a place, certainly not today, but even probably in general, I'm not at a place where I feel comfortable talking about this publicly, but I will say that I have been forced to undergo multiple, what I guess I will very kindly call weight loss treatments in my lifetime. And they have all been shaming at a level that I didn't even fully process until my adulthood. They have definitely led to my many issues with food consumption, weight, and my own body image in general. All of those things were forced upon me by a combination of both of my parents and by doctors and by myself and by the media and by occasionally peers, occasionally actual friends. From personal experience, even though I am a sample size of one, I've seen plenty of people on the internet who can support this, that these things will absolutely lead to mental health issues where overeating may become a side effect. This company, by the way, after their initial tweet announcing what they described as a world first weight loss device faced backlash, the University of Otago wrote in a follow-up tweet that the device is not intended as a quick or long-term weight loss tool. Pause there for a second. It's not quick or long-term. What time frame is it meant for? Who, what, where, when, why, how is this useful? If it's neither quick nor long-term. That sounds like literally every diet. Instead, they said it is, quote, aimed to assist people who need to undergo surgery and who cannot have the surgery until they have lost weight. With that logic, my guy, they could just as easily have lipo. If they need to lose weight to undergo surgery, then wouldn't they need a quick solution? Back to the company. Their own press release focused heavily on fighting a, quote, global epidemic, by which they mean obesity, not even mentioning weight loss surgeries until 10 paragraphs in, and stating that such surgeries, quote, cannot be relied upon. The University of Otago also pointed out that similar practices of wiring people's jaws shut were popular in the 1980s, but came with risks including choking on vomit, gum disease, and acute psychiatric conditions. The thing that they put out, by the way, would still have all of those issues. I can't imagine how they've solved them, specifically the acute psychiatric conditions. Further, wiring jaws shut didn't actually work as a weight loss solution. Most people gained back the weight because of course they did. 
The study was also criticized for failing to account for any links between obesity and structural issues like poverty, working conditions, and living in isolation from community, along with multi-billion dollar diet and beauty industries that leave people with body image issues and stigma around weight. Working conditions. People who work longer hours tend to be fatter. Because you know what takes time? Making a nutritious meal. You know what's quick and cheap for people in poverty who are working long hours? Fast food, unhealthy food, pre-prepared food, been there, done that, can confirm. You know, and let alone the diet and beauty industries, the body image issues, everything that the media tells us about how we need to look and what weight we need to be. It will only be a matter of time until an unregulated Instagram company starts creating their version of this weight loss device to be sold to the masses, said Yeboah. And I just wanna say that when I see that, I will be every bit as furious as I am right now but I absolutely know that this person is right. It's incredibly irresponsible and will do nothing but encourage more eating disorders in people or trigger those who have a history of eating disorders. That's the end of the article. I know that people will take this video less seriously because I'm so obviously angry and because I sound slash look slash present whatever word you want to use as a woman. Fine, women aren't allowed to be angry, I get it. We're also not allowed to be fat or pretty much any of the other things that I am. So I don't care. Also, this video is not intended to be about me. It's about how absolutely terrible this device is, how it sets us back literal decades in what we're trying to do in terms of the body positivity and anti-fat phobia movements that are happening right now. But in saying that, I do have to acknowledge that I have some privilege in being a smaller fat person, in that when I call myself fat around skinny friends, they'll literally be like, oh, you're not fat. As though I have called myself ugly, which I haven't because I look great, but I'm also fat. Part of that is just because BMI is meaningless, but the BMI says that I'm obese. So I've experienced medical fat phobia. I'm speaking about a lot of this from experience because I have experience with disordered eating, not by the way, an eating disorder. And I want to make that clear because eating disorders are pathological. They are diagnoses, they are life-threatening. What I experienced was disordered eating caused by the weight loss industry, caused by pressure from family to lose weight, caused by things I was forced to do by family in an attempt to lose weight, slash be healthier as they put it, but I've never had an eating disorder. I didn't experience what could be considered the full extent of the negatives of this. But also when I was 11 years old, I went to the doctor with my then 12 year old brother at the same time, and I was about 20 pounds overweight and he was about 20 pounds underweight. And I was very sensitive at age 11. I'm still pretty sensitive to this day. And the doctor to my face with my brother and my dad in the room asked if I was eating all of my brother's food. And that was right around the time I was beginning to have body image issues. And I will literally never forget that comment or that day or how I felt in that room. So no, I don't have the full experience of being a fat, fat person. Certainly not a super fat or an infinifat. And if you don't know what those words are, look them up. Honestly, I'm not educated enough to really go into detail about it. All I can say is that this article has me absolutely fuming to a level that nothing has in days. I also had a very stressful and unsatisfying appointment with my therapist today, so it was not a good time for me to see this article. If now you're like, you've wasted my time by posting this whole video. I'm sorry, I needed a vent. Sometimes you just have to scream into the void and that's what I'm doing. For those of you who don't know, void is the name of my cat. And I've been saying all of this looking directly at him. He has barely looked up, he's asleep. It's not bothering him and it's cathartic for me. Please let me live. Aubrey's tweets that she put on her Instagram, which is where I found out about this. She says, regarding that jaw closing device, it's horrible. It's not a new concept. And for fat people, especially fat people with eating disorders, seeing it can be triggering as all get out. For that reason, I'm not gonna post a picture slash link here. In your rightful outrage about this device, remember, this device is specifically designed for fat people. Anti-fatness may hurt all of us, but fat people are its intended targets. The impacts on fat people, especially fat disabled people, should be at the center here. Two, it's specifically designed for use as a barrier to other medical care. Fat people with health conditions are often denied surgical care unless and until we lose weight. This is a new way to enforce an existing requirement. Don't just fight the device, fight that requirement. Three, even the most optimistic studies show significant long-term weight loss is extremely rare. 
Someone my size, this is Aubrey talking obviously, someone my size has a 0.8% chance of becoming thin in their lifetime. Healthcare isn't a reward for weight loss. Fat people shouldn't have to do the nearly impossible just to get care. Four, give content warnings for this stuff. Ringing the alarm about these things is good. You should do it. And you should do it assuming that fat people, disabled people, and people with eating disorders will see those posts too. It could and will trigger eating disorder relapses and PTSD slash flashbacks. Five, if you're outraged by this, I'd strongly suggest looking into the risks and complications that come with weight loss surgeries. As people who've had weight loss surgeries can tell you, it is far from the easy way out that many characterize it as. If you decide to post about that, use CNs. Also, judgment of people who've had weight loss surgery isn't welcome here, especially from people who haven't been super fat slash infinity fat. This stuff is complicated. Very fat people deserve better than internet pylons to difficult, scary, often coerced decisions. Ditto uncritical celebration of weight loss surgery. Big agree to all of that. She does a much better job of presenting all of this professionally, but I just needed to scream into the void. Thank you, Void, for letting me do that. If you're still here on this video, thank you for listening. If you would like to also scream about how absolutely barbaric this quote-unquote treatment is in my comments, please do so. I would love to hear literally just agreement. I'm mad, and that's kind of all I've got. I'll see you when I see you.